Hello, I'm Clement Paligaru. Welcome to Pacific Pulse. Coming up on the program, we look back at Tanya Nugent's visit earlier this year to Tonga when she explored the increase in popularity of Australian rules football in the Pacific. In this next story, we visit Adelaide's Pacific Islander community as it comes together to celebrate Fiji's Independence Day. My name is Mary and I uh, got into Australia in uh, January. I am an agricultural science uh, teacher here on uh, an Aussie scholarship to um, pursue a master's degree in plant health and biosecurity at the University of Adelaide. I have learned a lot. I've met a lot of people. I've made a lot of friends. I'm looking forward to tonight to meet uh, the Fijian community to join in, to have fun, and to um, just be part of a large community, enjoy our Independence Day. And uh, the association has invited uh, the community to join us in the celebration. I usually don't um, join in the celebration back home, so today is like my first, will be my first celebration with the community here. So I still have to experience that. <laughs> uh, we are preparing a lovo. It's what we call the underground um, uh, oven in Fiji. Oh, yeah. well, done, well done to us and now we're ready for the next step. And the, yeah, the lovo is cooked. Tonight uh, is about uh, Fijians and basically coming together. It doesn't matter what race or what uh, nationality you come from. It's about celebrating a Fiji day, so I'll be performing as well today and singing, so uh, it's going to be a great night. We are trying to celebrate our, our independence day. That is, it's happening back home, but we try and remember that here as well, because we are far from home now. I need your grace to make it through We should do this more often, and especially with um, Independence Weekend. Yep, it's good to have everybody here together. Uh, we don't have a, uh, a winter. We have a tropical climate over there, and that's something I miss. I never used to wear a cardigan in Fiji, never. But here I have to wear a cardigan for the winter season, so that's something that I miss. Uh, like. I don't like wearing a cardigan. It's a very enjoyable night. It's good to see so many people here. And it's good to see you guys covering the event today. Oh, Fiji, ever Fiji. The cultural items today, the food, the people around me, it makes me feel like I'm home and I'm not far away from home. So really, tonight I am in Fiji. I'm in Tonga this week, where a new code of football is making its mark in this rugby union mad region. Tonga is hosting the AFL Oceania Youth Cup, with players representing eight Pacific nations taking part. It's an amazing opportunity when you consider that many of these players only recently started playing the game. And for the AFL, it's exciting times as this unique brand of football is clearly capturing the hearts of Pacific Islanders. Uh, I think AFL is a very beautiful game, uh, tough and yeah. It's coming a bit popular in the South Pacific and everybody is loving it. In the Pacific, I reckon it's a sort of 38 to 42,000. 
um, playing the game and playing the game in a semi-serious, you know, um, an Auskick program or school competition, you know. Mm, hopefully, some year we'll go to uh, in Australia and play with those staff guys there. To inspire guys like Gideon, the AFL has brought some Pacific stars to the Tonga tournament. Yeah, we're just over here promoting uh, Aussie rules football and, uh, you know, just trying to help out the youth. Fijian Nick Natanui was the number two pick in the 2008 AFL draft. Legendary rugby league player and Tonga national Israel Folau has recently made the switch to AFL. Probably the main games in, in the Pacific is rugby union and rugby league, so... It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit weird as well for me. I'm playing rugby league my whole life and, and now I'm seeing a different game. And, and um, It's a chance for them to, to switch codes and, and they can do it. So for myself, you know, I'll take a bit of time over the uh, next, couple, next year or so to, to try and adapt to the game. There will be AFL players in a couple of years' time that will get drafted. The minimum, minimum age we can, we can draft someone into the AFL, you need to be 18. So you two boys are two years away, 16. My name is Bola Club, Blue Melbourne, Melbourne uh, Richmond Tigers. Um, over here helping out um, the AFL and the, their PNG and their Tongan program, the Pacific program, uh, and obviously looking for new talent. Um, we've got two boys, Gideon Simon and Nathan Malbeck in the PNG Academy in, in Port Moresby, uh, which is really exciting. We, we see a really, a really exciting opportunity for more recruits uh, to come to Australia to play AFL football and we see the Pacific as a really good breeding ground for Aussie rules. I think um, they bring a bit of an X factor to the game because because of their athletic traits. Um, the PNG boys obviously have uh, fairly dynamic sort of kids. Um, they're very quick and very lateral. Uh, the Tongan boys obviously like Israel Folau are physically and athletically a lot bigger than a lot of the Australian guys, so um, they got the, the size, the weight and the speed uh, to play the game, so I think it'll add a real excitement factor. It's these two countries, Tonga and Papua New Guinea, that face each other in the finals, with PNG taking the Oceania Cup. But at the other end of the competition ladder, there are winners too. For the Solomon Islands, AFL is still a grassroots game, introduced recently by Australians from Ramsey, the regional assistance mission for the Solomon Islands. All right, that was good. The boys have been playing together for uh, uh, about five years now, uh, just themselves with some of the Ramsey police officers and military. Uh, but they come from uh, Namuliki. It, it says quarter settlement in Honiara. It's a fantastic thing because most of the boys, uh, I think 21 of the 24, had never been on a plane before. Uh, they're all, nearly all from settlement areas, so they're struggling, and it's uh, just fantastic for them to come across and not only just to be here, but then to, to win their first game and then today to beat uh, the very strong New Zealand team uh, to finish fifth. Uh, I think uh, state building is really important but you need to have also the, that sense of nation and one of the great ways of getting that is through uh, sport in my view and uh, this is, there's a clear demonstration today how proud they are in their, of representing their country for the first time and I think when they go back the people of Solomon Islands will be very proud of the team as well. I think they have seen the, 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 the whole point after playing for so many years. Uh, they know that there's something at the end uh, of their playing, that there's a tournament there that they can build on uh, and, and do something uh, with AFL. And the, the, let's say there is future of AFL uh, in the Solomons. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook. You can see all our stories on our website. And I'll see you next time on Pacific Pulse.